Hi everyone, it's Barry again. I'm out today doing some photogrammetry, photo inspection, 32-bit imagery. It's a, a perfect day, beautiful, but as you can see, it's, it's quite sunny. And I'm at the Cathedral of the Isles, which is on Cumbrae on the west coast of Scotland. It's in a, as you'll see, a beautiful location. It's sort of really photogenic anyway, but we're not here to take pretty pictures. We're here to document and create and capture data that's going to be useful for conservation or for education or just for people to have a look if they're curious. Um, so um, as you see, it's a beautiful day and it presents its own problems as you see. Well, here's the cathedral up there. I'll point it out to you. There you go. What a brilliant blue sky, very photogenic, uh, but we're not after that. But today presents us some particular problems because it's really sunny. We've got some dark shadows. We've got problems with ex exposure and um, we're going to explore those and, and do some close range photogrammetry and um, some 360 and we'll probably get time to do some LIDAR scanning with my phone and um, just to show you how we can add 3D and use that and just show you what the differences in quality are. Okay, well, um, I'll be walking around and then I'll see you back in the studio where we'll do some processing. Okay, I've already rubbish job, didn't I? Okay. <laughs> so we're all aware of some of the problems that we get when we're trying to take imagery in a bright sunny day like we've got today. We're used to the shadows, but I'm going to just talk a little bit about the highlights. So this is an image, it looks pretty good before, but I've tweaked it so we can um, recover some of the details in the shadows and in the highlights too. But even though the image still looks pretty good, if I zoom in, you're going to see a few little issues with this. Um, as I circle around here, um, you'll see some red dots. Now these red dots are what we call clipped areas. That are, means they're overexposed. There's no data in those. So those are the things that can cause us issues when we come to mesh things because it produces all sorts of weird artifacts. Something we're going to have to clean up. Um, what I've done now is I've just moved the white point and um, I tweaked the highlights a little bit to eliminate those bits and you see it's a lot cleaner now you may think we're being pedantic here but this is the thing that causes all sorts of issues when you come to mesh things up just zoom in in here as well and you see we've got some detail in the shadows we've been able to recover but it's still not brilliant and um, there's only so much we can do with a single image um, and that's why 32-bit photogrammetry is such a useful tool and we'll go and talk about that in a short while but this is the image now we can output that save that and the beauty of it is if we can apply that corrections to a whole batch of images if we want to uh, bef before i go on now i wanted to share something see these black dots these are dust spots these are the pain of any photogrammetrist live because they create havoc when you sift algorithms and when you come to stitching i've just used a heel tool on here to get rid of them um but you can see some of the challenges we've got on a sunny day. Um, um, you've got the bright, lily lit area, then the dark shadow behind. The red area you see on our seagull friend there is, um, was an area of um, uh, uh, clipped area with no data. But what I've done is I've tweaked that a little bit and then in, recovered some of the shadows on the backside. Um, this is really important because if you don't do that um, and you miss some of the texture, the difference in colors can be seen as an artifact and you can try the meshing stuff can get really screwed up and produce all sorts of weird things curly things that fly off at different angles you can see we recovered the data in here see there it is dark and now we've recovered a bit so it's going to build a much better model and um, just bear in mind this is about 25 30 meters away and um, our seagull is looking a bit splendid don't know what type it is but just you can see the level of detail that we can get even from 25 meters away but let's see how we put all this together in a um, <coughs> so we can show how we can um, share all these information so i'm using a, a platform here called eyesight and this allows me to attach all my images to different areas different sites and this is at the cathedral of the isles which is just near off for logs uh, zoom in and the orange areas are 360 degree imagery. I'm just going to click on this. It'll take a little while to load because this is a website. Anyone can look at this if I give them permission or you give them permission to do it. And it becomes like a collaborative place to, to look at your artifact, your heritage, your structures. 
Um, it's a little bit blurry because this is a 1.1 gigapixel image um, that we've stitched, stitched together. It's tiled, it takes a little while, small amount of latency, but doesn't have, uh, doesn't take long to resolve. And what we're going to do here is I, this is the founder's tomb. And what I've done is I've actually scanned this with my uh, LiDAR in my Apple phone. Now I've used Polycam here. There are other ones that are available. And I've just produced a little video of what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> It's really straightforward. It's great. You can see the differences. The problem we've got with light and shade in here. It's equalized it out a bit. It looks very realistic. It's amazing quality for something out of a phone. It's astonishing. And um, so that was a, a video, but we can actually output the mesh as an OBJ file too. And that is this. This is an OBJ file. This is straight out of the phone. I haven't done anything here to lighten the areas, which I probably would do if I had a bit more time. And, but it just shows, shows how quickly you can get really good, interactive, engaging material just from your phone. The problem is, is how do you show it? Well, you can put it into a platform like this and share it. I could have this as an E57, alas, a PLY file as well. It'll output all of them. It's a really smart piece of software. Then we say, um, so let's say, for example, <clears throat> but we want to have a tour around inspect different things and the photo itself allows us to zoom in in incredible detail we don't need to model anything we're not laser scanning this um, we never get this detail out of a laser scanner no matter how good it is largely because the cameras inside most laser scanners are just not as good as this now this is a uh, some uh, person from glasgow uh Busan, someone this must be the masons it'd be really interesting to find out a bit of their history now what i can do with this is i can add information or add a note so i'm add, adding a smart area and then i could link other things to this i can make it as a sticky note to remind me or to share with other information or with other people looking at the site or i can um yeah we'll add other photographs i can add video files documents and a description i can also add a url so i could link to sharepoint or to some other site if i wish to so we can all share information and produce a knowledge bank of what's there as well, not just the imagery. So what I've got here in this highlight, uh, as I circle over it, it'll highlight as a report. So I can add that anywhere I want to. But let's have a look, look around and see what there is. Well, while I was there as well, I tried to scan this um, cross here, which I believe comes from about the 14th century. Um, and I scanned it. The problem with this one is I didn't have a long enough stick, selfie stick on my iPhone to get the very top, as you'll see on one side. I could get the bit up the top of the bank, but but again, it's as good enough for an awful lot of things, an awful lot of way to give people a better idea of what it looks like. Obviously, I do a better job for next time. Um, I'll take a big stick with me next time. But then we've got this 360 tour, a virtual tour. Let's skip over to the other side of the church. Um, this is looking at the main main front entrance. Just takes a little while to upload. Not that long. There you go. Um, so we give out the ability to look around, zoom around, see different things. Of course, you could take a photograph before or you could take a photograph after. Show what's happening, trends, corrosion, erosion, all sorts of things. Maybe it's just looking at the building fabric. But, um, <clears throat> but it... Although we've got really good zoom on this, sometimes you need to get a bit more detail. So in this case, I've, what I've done is taken some more photographs of detail at Spire. And I've got a series of photographs here zoomed in at different levels. Um, so I can see that. Now, I'm not going to be able to see that from a laser scan. I'm not going to be able to see that from most 360 imagery. It's just these smart 360s are smart. This is just viewing it straight in my uh, Explorer, my my image viewer that comes straight out of Windows, every version. So I've got a few zoom tools in here, but they're not massive. But I've also got all the tools I, I, if I want to use it to embed it or do something else with it. Um, but as you, we, that's the simple first zoom in. But I then I can save it, embed it, copy and paste it into a report or some other sort of documentation um let's have a look at another area as well um just to show you the definition we can get so over here in the window we're looking at some details and this is for the glaziers probably to look at 
So we have a stained glass window here and we're looking at the outside to see what sort of repairs and condition the leading is in. And I can zoom in again and you can see the level of detail and condition we can get. And again, this is from about probably 18 meters away. So we can get up and, and look at all these areas from our desktop or from our tablet. You could be looking at this from your iPad. It, providing you've got an internet connection, it works fine. Um, phone's a little tricky with your thumbs, but hey, you can still zoom in and you get all the gesture controls as well. So if you use your two finger squeezes, but let's go inside because this is where I love it. There's lots of softwares out there for looking at the external stuff that you might get from drones. But I do the insides and this is the inside of this beautiful little cathedral. Um, some, uh, it's not one of the most ornamentally gothic and ornamental challenging ones and it's quite small but even so the amount of history that's here so we can zoom in look at the masonry work look at the stonework look at all the other artifacts that there might be within this um, building and of course lots of applications for this whether that's for education or story but one of the big applications is insurance and um, because we're not just looking at the, we're not just cataloging the, the material structure, we're cataloging all the artifacts that there are in there too. So let's say, for example, I wanted to, this might go missing. Well, I've got a fantastic record of what it looked like. So if it is recovered, you can identify, it helps people recover items too. So it's a visual inventory of what is in there. And of course, we can add other notes, like I did outside. I've added a, a, a note to do some engineering inspection here. There's something going wrong. We might want someone else to look at it. So because of the website, we can say, we'll take this out. And actually, you could look at it in your tablet. In this place, there was a 3G connection, and I could look at this model. But we can scan around it, zoom in, just have a look, and then say, oh, hold on a minute. Here's something else that might be of value. We need to do an assessment of that or we need to do some photo identification of it so we can record it if it does go missing. So we can add and configure this this table here in any way you like um, to add it. And then it becomes part of a database that is searchable. <clears throat> but if I'm looking at this for just for architectural information, for conservation, for education, I might just want to use it for marketing and um, to show and share this as a tour of this castle or cathedral church or whatever it might be but this i love the, the ceiling here it's all painted a labor of love if ever there was one um scrolling around and um, we're just using our mouse here but we've got some navigation down there on the bottom left we can use to zoom in and we can see ah uh, what was the goal gonna play in that particular time piece by john stanley and we're not allowed to touch his organ apparently which is good news um so we can zoom around and then look and then, you know, whether that might be for inspection, insurance, uh, conservation, anybody can share this. It also allows you to tell the story of things, which I think is one of the most important parts of the documentation work that I do. In this case, we'll have to look, oh, who is this? This is Robert Alexander, who is the Bishop of Argyle. In fact, I think he's the founder. Um, and it was his tomb that we scanned and did the LiDAR point cloud mesh model of. So that's about it. I just wanted to share this with you, show you how you can use different types of photography to document um, uh, heritage, document buildings, do condition reports, um, all sorts of different things in a web-based environment. Um, I do training on how to do this as well as commissions, of course. And um, if you need any questions answered or you'd like to try some training, um, please feel free to get in touch with the, um, you can get me at the SharePoint LinkedIn, just DM me, that's fine. Um, I hope you found this useful uh, about the potential. Obviously, every day is not a sunny day, but probably the sunny days are the worst ones for us to do our job as a photogrammetrist or as an inspection uh, photographer. Um, but I hope I showed you that you can actually recover things and share it. Um, any questions, again, please drop me a line. Look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next one.